I'm Courtney Lee, and I'm the manager of the Women's Skydiving Leadership Network, and I am so excited to debut our video lecture series. Um, one of the goals of the WSLN is to promote women leaders in the sport of skydiving, and we're really excited to provide this platform as an opportunity for women to speak about their experiences and their expertise and to share that with all of us. Um, we're going to release a new video every month, and we've got some really incredible women already lined up uh, for the next several months. So uh, follow us here, find us on Facebook, stay tuned, stay, um, stay on top of the news, and we'll be getting new content out to you shortly. So uh, without further ado, though, I would like to introduce our first presenter. Jeanette Lefkowitz has been skydiving for more than a decade and has uh, made more than 10,000 jumps. Since 2007, she's flown on SDC Rhythm XP, who over the years have advanced to become one of the best skydiving teams in the world. Um, she's uh, represented the United States at several different world meets, including in uh, 2016, she flew with the um, Golden Knights four-way women's team and they took home the gold. It was awesome. It was so cool to watch. Um, she co-founded the uh, WSLN in 2015 with Christy Fricken. And when she's not training with Rhythm, she's busy with player coach events, with tunnel camps, with um, the MW, with the Midwest Skydiving League uh, competitions, with records. Uh, it's just this woman is a machine. She's training and coaching and giving back to the sport all the time. She's worked with countless belly flyers and competitors over the years. Um, and so many of us that have worked with her in one form or another have gone on to do amazing things in the sport, to get medals, to set records, to do all kinds of things. So um, a lot of us have Jeanette to thank for the, the skills that we have as jumpers. Um, in addition to being known as an amazing coach and flyer, she's known for her incredibly positive attitude and her determination. This woman just like never quits. She will never quit until she gets it done. So I am so pleased to um, present to you guys Jeanette Lefkowitz giving her presentation called How to Keep Women and Men Too in Skydiving. Thanks and enjoy. Good evening. My name is Jeanette Lefkowitz. Tonight I wanted to start by talking about something that I've been giving a lot of thought to lately, and that is how do we keep more women and men too in our sport of skydiving? First, I think we got to start by defining the issue. <clears throat> USPA has just over 30,000 members, which means it's a really small community. It's also, our sport also is, it's a very social sport. It relies on, uh, jumping with other people for enjoyment. So this means that the advancement of our sport and the enjoyment of its members is driven by the personal achievements of those in the sport. Additionally, the average skydiver stays in the sport only for a few hundred jumps or a couple years. So keeping people in the sport longer would have a direct effect on their ability to give back to the sport, to advance the sport. So um, this cause means better skydivers, better skydives, and more fun for those that are enjoying the sport. Additionally, USPA reports that its membership is only 12% women, which is kind of a crazy number. I mean, last I checked, general population were about 50% women. Um, this means that for every amazing woman you know in the sport, there's three more missing if we just matched the general population. Women do make tandem jumps in larger numbers, so they are interested in skydiving. My local drop zone reports that their tandem uh, students are about 40% women. So we're missing out on the potential achievements of women that are interested in skydiving but never get past their tandem jump or maybe they start AFF but they never get through AFF or maybe they even get their license but they leave the sport after a few years. Um, so retaining the women that we have and encouraging them to stay in the sport is really important to increasing the number of women in the sport and then ultimately uh, enhancing what those women can give back to the sport for all of us. So what can we do? Uh, the question people often ask is, why do people not continue skydiving? Uh, why does a woman quit skydiving? But really, why does anyone quit skydiving? And, and a lot of times these issues are the same 
for women and men. Uh, there might be unique situations for women, but but at, at their root, there's a lot of things that are very similar. So when we brainstorm on this question, why people quit skydiving, or when you ask people why did they quit skydiving, um, there's lots of reasons that people come up with. Uh, it was too expensive. My friends quit. I didn't know anyone there. Uh, maybe the drop zone shut down <clears throat> for the winter and I got busy and into other things. Uh, I wasn't very good or somebody told me I wasn't very good. Um, somebody told me I was doing something dangerous or something happened and I got scared. <clears throat> maybe I didn't feel welcome at the drop zone. Um, uh, yeah, a number of things like that. Um, so in thinking about this further, when I think about all these reasons and all the reasons why people decide not to skydive, I think there are really three main areas that are necessary to keep someone in the sport, whether it's a woman or a man or, you know, any skydiver. Um, and, and when they make the decision to spend their time and money on skydiving instead of something else, the strength of these three areas is really what's at play in getting them to go to the drop zone and show up and make that jump. And I believe that any time someone does quit skydiving, it's because there's a, a, a lack in one of these three areas. So <clears throat> I propose that these three areas are, uh, first, a need to feel safe. Um, secondly, a need to feel welcome. And then finally, a need to feel challenged or some sense of, some sense of purpose in the sport. So with these three things in mind, What's the number one thing that you can do to help encourage women and men to, to stay in the sport? That's to start with yourself. Keep yourself skydiving first. And I know this sounds cheesy, but at its most basic, if, if you want to inspire others to skydive more, skydiving yourself is really critical. But more than that, we inspire most by example. Keeping yourself passionate about skydiving not just helps you stay in the sport, but it's the most genuine and easy way to inspire others. So let's break down each of these three areas. First, I need to feel safe. So what does this mean? Skydiving is inherently risky. And most of us, when we started skydiving, we did it for the thrill of taking a risk of overcoming our fear. And that was something we were looking for. But there's a difference between overcoming a fear and managing a risk and being out of control or being afraid of being hurt. So what can you do to keep yourself feeling safe? Um, the first thing is information is power. Um, fear often comes from some area that we don't fully understand or don't fully know. Um, so seek out good information and don't accept not understanding. Um, if you find yourself afraid, try and think about exactly what is it that you're afraid of and do you really understand that and try and go and, and, and understand that specific thing. Um, and keep asking questions until you're satisfied with the answers. How do you know if the information you're getting is good? I think first just consider the source. Um, uh, ask somebody with more experience around the drop zone. Ask other people about that person um, and if there's somebody that's worth uh, getting advice from. So another way you can help yourself is to promote a safety culture among your own, uh, uh, your own practices. So some tips for doing this. Uh, first, try only one thing new at a time. So if you're jumping in a new drop zone, it's maybe not also the, the right time to try wearing a GoPro for the first time or being on the largest jump you've ever been on. Secondly, uh, review and recommit to your processes that you've learned along the way. So your gear checks and your um, uh, practice touches and all that stuff. Uh, follow those processes and continue to follow those processes. A lot of times uh, where we get in trouble is when we let complacency uh, get a hold of us. And it's complacency is just waiting to sneak up on you. So don't let it. If you're not sure about something, ask. Um, Another one that I like to uh, give newer jumpers is if you have to think about a decision for a while, um, safety wise, for example, weather conditions or maybe a canopy uh, choice, whether to downsize or, or change types of canopies, uh, take the more conservative choice. And then once you've made that decision, um, after the fact, if you know a good outcome, so maybe you didn't get on the load, but everybody landed safely anyway, um, just because there was a good outcome, it doesn't mean that it was a safe decision or that you made the wrong decision. Um, if you're not comfortable speaking up or, or asking these questions in a, in a uh, 
in, in a public environment, ask someone else in private too. So now you've helped yourself, how can you help others? Well, share all this information that you find. Um, if you're going to a canopy course or uh, if you're learning about uh, your gear or rigging or you want to go tour uh, a or you want to go tour a manufacturing facility, take people with you. Um, promote a safety culture around you by setting an example with all the things I talked about before and speaking up. Um, offer gear checks. And when you make a safety related decision, let other jumpers know what you're doing and why you've done that. Um, a lot of times people assume that everyone knows what the wind conditions are and they wanna jump anyway. But a lot of times they don't. And just speaking up, often I'll, I'll be uh, getting to a plane and, and the winds might be a little sketchy and everybody on the plane is like, yeah, we're fine to go. And then as soon as my team says, you know what, I think it's not really uh, a good time to jump, a lot of people start to get off the plane and people will come up to me and say, oh, I'm so glad you did. I wasn't sure about jumping. And um, because you you pulled off, I had the confidence to pull off. And that's great. But just like, you know, it's 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 crazy to me that somebody wouldn't just decide to do that on their own. But how can you promote safety for other people? It's by speaking up and, and not being afraid to make that decision. Number two is a need to feel welcome. So when we first do our, our first tandem or we sign up for AFF or static line, our goals are usually overcoming a fear or learning this new, amazing, totally crazy thing. Um, we don't realize what a social sport skydiving is. And then once we have our license and we've overcome that fear and the adrenaline kind of wears off, um, our enjoyment and, and our ability to learn really depends quite a bit on jumping with other people. And so the social network that we build becomes really important. It's, it's a truly unique aspect to, uh, to the sport. So what can I do to help myself feel more welcome? Um, first, take time to strengthen your social network. Uh, meet lots of different people at the drop zone. Uh, one, one of the things that a lot of times I'll hear people talk about was specifically to women about uh, have why they might leave the sport is that maybe they um, start dating somebody in the sport and then and then if that changes if that status changes and they get out of the sport and I think this is just another reason why having a bigger social network means that that person will be more likely to stay in the sport um, even when uh, perhaps a relationship changes or maybe your friend that you started skydiving with doesn't moves or goes to a different drop zone or stops skydiving, having a broader social network is kind of a buffer for the changes that just happen naturally among, among the people that we jump with. Stay in contact with your skydiving friends when you're not jumping. So if, if especially if you live in a drop zone with uh, a, a winter, um, keep in touch over the winter and, and, and see how people are doing. And you'll be more likely to go back to the drop zone if you've kept in touch with people over the winter. Uh, visit other drop zones and meet, meet new people. Um, so one of the biggest things I can, I can suggest about strengthening your social network is ask to jump with someone. Um, ask someone with less experience than you. Ask someone with more experience than you. Ask that person that you think there's no way they're gonna jump with you. Um, ask me, ask me to jump with you when, when um, uh, if you see me training and stuff. I may not be able to jump with you right then, but, but I will, um, but ask. Um, and then ask someone to jump with you again, and then ask again, and then keep asking. Um, whenever you can, avoid jumping alone. Every jump is an opportunity to share something with someone that you just you just can't get if you do it if you do it alone. Finally, if you experience a situation that makes you feel unwelcome, um, speak up. Or if you don't feel comfortable, ask someone else to speak up. Or if neither of those are are good for you, um, change your situation. Surround yourself with people that do make you feel comfortable. This may mean you have to, to try out a new drop zone or try out a new uh, group of friends that you jump with. Um, but doing that will help make sure that you keep jumping in, in, and get rid of these situations where you, don't, where you don't feel comfortable. So what can you do to help others feel more welcome? Um, all the same stuff. Stay in contact with people at the drop zone. Reach out to new people. If you know somebody you've been jumping with hasn't been around in a while, reach out to them and see 
you know, how they're doing and, and if they're coming out to the drop zone soon. Sometimes it just takes that call to get someone out to the drop zone. I know for me, when I first started, um, I didn't know a whole lot of people and it was, I had plenty of stuff going on in, in my life outside of skydiving. And it was very easy to decide not to go to the drop zone on the weekend. Um, but somebody reached out to me and said, Jeanette, would you like to be on a four-way team? We, I know these three people and they'd, they'd love to, um, uh, they want to, they want to find a four-way team and I think you'd be great for it. And so I did it. And, and, um, I think that had I not had that, that reason, those people expecting me to come to the drop zone, I probably would have not gone to the drop zone and I probably would have, uh, not continued skydiving and, 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 uh, I would have missed out on all the amazing things that I've had uh, that skydiving's brought to me. Um, so reach out to people, um, ask someone to jump with you, say the same thing, ask someone to jump with you and then ask them again, ask that person. If you see someone jumping alone, ask them to jump with you. Um, do your part to help make no one jump alone. If you see or hear something that might make someone else feel uncomfortable, uh, speak up either to that person in private or maybe to the person that said it or, or publicly. And this isn't always something that's like, like really offensive. It might be something small or especially when we're talking about women, it might be a uh, small comment that's not even meant to sound, uh, to sound like it might uh, offend or, or upset someone. Um, so an example I can think of is sometimes I'll have, I'm, I might have a, a woman come to me and say like, oh, Jeanette, can you teach me about tracking? And then uh, someone else might say, oh, you know, uh, you should ask Steve. He's got this really long uh, body and he's really strong and he's really great at tracking. And that's great. And it's really true. Steve's excellent at tracking, but it it might it might make that woman feel like, okay, well, you've immediately told me about why this, this six foot guy is, is the best at tracking. Um, and so to that, like speaking up to me in that situation, I just said, well, yeah, Steve's great, but I can, I can out track him. So I can teach you how to track great as well as, as well as anyone. And sometimes the person who says something like that doesn't even realize what they're saying. Um, and by speaking up and maybe being a little bit light about it, you can uh, kind of, take away that, that negative um, uh, connotation that, that that woman might get from, from a comment like that. So number three is a reason to feel challenged or to have a purpose in the sport. And this is a really big one too. Um, most skydivers, once we, we start, we get to a, like a basic level of proficiency. We got our A license or our B license or whatever it is that was our, um, our, our goal to begin with. And then after that, we kind of get lost. Um, once the thrill of kind of overcoming that fear um, has, has faded, without a goal or a purpose, um, other priorities in our life will become more compelling than skydiving. So how do you keep yourself challenged? Start by asking yourself, what do you really want to do in the sport? What's the one thing that you want to do? First of all, I, I, I encourage you to know that whatever it is, you can do it. You can absolutely do it. Um, so once you've decided what it is you really want to do in the sport, um, set short and long-term goals uh, towards that goal. So you want to go to nationals? That's great. Start by maybe attending a four-way skills camp or a tunnel camp or scrambles. Um, maybe a goal would be to find one other person that wants to do the same thing and talk to them about what they want to do. Um, <clears throat> if you do know what your goals are, or especially if you don't travel to other drop zones and tunnels, just to see what else is out there. A lot of times people just don't know what other things they can do. And once you see other people doing it, then it, it becomes very obvious, like, oh, what that person's doing, that's what I want to do. Um, secondly, so once you've decided what it is you want to do and you've set short and long-term goals, tell people what you want. Um, even if you think that this person can't help you towards this goal at all, uh, tell them anyway. It's really important because it helps you commit to completing this goal more and you just will be so surprised at how much somebody could actually help you and you had no idea that they could. So tell people what you want and tell other people what you want and tell more people what you want. And you'll be more likely to actually follow through on your goals and make them happen. 
finally celebrate your successes. So it's very easy to think about like, okay, so I want to be on a team and I want to go to nationals. And then now I'm just going to keep uh, putting my head down. And I'm going to just keep thinking about what's that next thing I got to do. What's that next thing I got to do. Um, but as you set these short-term goals, when you complete them, uh, enjoy that. Celebrating your successes along the way and reminding yourself of what were all the small things that you had to do to get to where you are will help remind you that you truly can do whatever whatever it is that you want. And so the next time you set a goal and you're looking up at the mountain, you'll understand that you can do all the small steps that you need to. And it'll be very motivating uh, in, in that way. So how can you help others uh, towards finding a, uh, finding a challenge and finding a purpose? First, just share what it is that you're passionate about. Share your own goals. Bring other people along with you to that tunnel camp or that skills camp or on a jump and show them what you learned when you uh, went to that tunnel camp or that skills camp. Um, ask them to be on a team with you or maybe just do one meet uh, with you. Compliment other people's effort. Uh, recognize their small successes. Um, ask other people what their goals are and, and help them figure out a way or, or tell them about how you've uh, managed your long-term and short-term goals and how you've uh, succeeded or even the failures that you've overcome towards reaching your own goals. Share your story and your passion and um, you'll be amazed at how inspiring that can be to other people. So wrapping this all up, I think spending some time just thinking about your own uh, skydiving career and these three areas for yourself can really go a long way to keeping you in the sport. Keeping a balance of these three things I think is really important because often the pressures that, that get us to not skydive might be in one specific area. Perhaps I got hurt or I had uh, so, something happen that, that scared me. Um, or maybe my uh, a friend of mine, a really good friend of mine that I jump with all the time is no longer jumping or moved. Um, or, or maybe I am not sure exactly what my goals are or I'm changing, I'm changing my goals. Having strength in the other areas will get you through uh, a weakness in one area. So I think it's really important to look at your skydiving career and how can you enhance yourself in these three areas. Um, along the way, there's always crossroads that happen in our skydiving career. These are major events that happen um, that have us reconsider uh, skydiving. They might have us reconsider our lives outside of skydiving or um, the choices that we're making outside of skydiving. Um, these can be both like a setback, perhaps uh, an injury or uh, witnessing a skydiving accident um, or perhaps losing uh, a nationals or not reaching uh, a long-term goal or perhaps a drop zone closing. Um, but it also could be the achievement of a goal. <clears throat> perhaps you're working towards a record and you actually attended the record camp and you got the record or winning a nationals and, and, a, and a team uh, achieving their goal, and then now maybe going their separate ways. It could be something outside of the sport, perhaps a move or um, a new job, going back to school, uh, maybe family changes. <clears throat> um, I found my own skydiving career has really been cyclical in this way. And, and it's always been strength in, these, in all three of these areas that, that really get me through and renew my passion for the sport, the other side of, of one of these events. Um, I'll share kind of the most recent one for me um, was at this past nationals. Um, it's no secret that I wanted really badly to win uh, this past U.S. nationals with my team. Um, it's something I've been working for for uh, 11 years on rhythm. Um, we've done like 500 to 800 training jumps every year. I've made over a thousand jumps personally every year. Uh, we've been through multiple teammate changes. We've been through great success and, and setbacks all along the way. So this year, more than ever, I really believed that my team could do it, that we could win and that we would win. And then we didn't. And it was heartbreaking uh, for about a day. And then it was fine. And it was um, really inspiring. And it, it really renewed my passion for the sport because of all these other things. I realized um, 
that the end of this cycle it just reminded me of how amazing and wonderful the sport is. I think about how amazing it is that I've jumped out of a plane 10,000 times now and not just survived, but I've enjoyed it and I've done some pretty amazing things along the way. I've gotten to jump with my mom. I've got to jump over the Palm in Dubai. I've gotten to jump in, in just some really amazing places. I get to jump with my husband. It's, it's, it's incredible. And then I think about like all the people I've met and jumped with and celebrated with and, and shared this passion with, um, overcome hardship and, and mourned loss with. And these are just some of the most amazing people. And all those people were, were there cheering me on. Um, a, a lot of them were celebrating their own successes and, and, and also working through their own uh, disappointments. And to be there with those people was really, uh, was really inspiring and, and, and really humbling. Uh, and then finally, I realized, of course, I didn't win and, and I really wanted to, um, but I truly made progress to my, towards my goal. And I proved to myself that I, I can and I can work towards anything that I set my mind to. And, and I'm not done yet. So um, that goal is still there for me uh, until I until I give up on it. And that's really exciting and inspiring. So in conclusion, I just want to put out there that that you can do amazing things um, and you can do amazing things to keep yourself in the sport and keep others in the sport and help us all make this sport just even better than it is. Um, stay safe, um, share your journey with others and just know that you can do anything you set your mind to. Thank you.